morning campers, it's Mark Atwood here, and it's, uh, I think it's Thursday. Does anybody else lose track of days? Time. Such an interesting feeling. I've been feeling a little bit dizzy recently. The um, sky is completely whited out, as it has been for most of this summer in the west of Ireland. And uh, I am sat in the garden. It's about 7.30 a.m. Just looking through social media and finding some interesting stuff to talk about. Um, but first, a little about me. I've done more exercise in the last six days than I have in the previous six years. And I am currently <laughs> walking around the house like an old man. You are an old man. No, I'm not. I refuse to admit that I'm an old man. And it's interesting because there's a couple of things that have happened in the last month. For me, personally, on a, you know, just on a my own body type basis. Firstly, I have reduced wine consumption by about 98%. I, that's my stomach. I don't know if you can hear that rumbling. <laughs> I've also reduced food consumption by quite a... I haven't actually done the maths on that. Um, you know, it's still carnivore, mostly. I did succumb to a burger last night because I played tennis. We played tennis with the kids until about 10 o'clock at night. Four of my kids, uh, which was fabulous. I love seeing them play tennis. And it's, it's actually quite interesting because two of two of my kids um, took up my offer of tennis coaching a few years ago uh, because I played a lot of tennis. I played a huge amount of tennis. Uh, I didn't start with tennis until I was about 35. But pre-COVID, I, I got quite good and I was playing five times a week but then during covid the local tennis club started implementing stupid oh god it was unbelievable i remember turning up and uh, going to shake this guy's hand and he offered his elbow to me i went what what are you doing why why are you trying to pump my elbow he says because of the covid i went are you going to shake my hand or not and he just looked at me like i was mad I remember that. That was that was crazy. And the other thing <laughs> it was crazy. I played a game with somebody, and then they wouldn't pick up the ball. I said, "I said the ball's just there." I said, "Well, I can't touch it. Why, why not? Well, because you just touched it." I was like, "Are you fucking serious?" And it used to be such a chilled out club. You know, you just turn up and play. And then because of the COVID, they introduced. This booking system, this online booking system implemented by Tennis Island under the guidelines. I mean, I, I actually just lost respect for everybody that was there, that was playing along with it. And I, I can't bring myself to go back. So I joined another tennis club in another town. And yeah, it's a pain in the ass driving. But I get the solitude of the courts in the morning and I get to take my children and, and we take it over in the evening when everybody else is too busy watching RTE or whatever the fuck they watch. And the people, you know, the people are all nice in tennis clubs. They are nice. And, um, but I just don't want to get involved. I just want to play tennis. So anyway, I want to talk, why am I talking about tennis? Oh yeah, because of the exercise that I'm doing. Um, yeah, bursting with energy, uh, getting up stupid o'clock. I don't know if it's to do with ascension or the way that we're manifesting things is to do with ascension because it is all connected. Um, somebody made a point to me a few months ago saying, talking about med beds actually and saying, you know, the fact that you're bringing in all this equipment to your healing center, um, mine and Gary's healing center is part of the manifestation process of bringing those things closer to us which I agree with, it is. That's the whole point, you know, manifesting that I've 
taught with the law of attraction over the years has shifted from the heart from the head to the heart and I think that's uh, a really important thing so if you're following your heart and moving without fear towards the future that we want then that is how we actually manifest by taking action that's the missing one of the missing pieces you have to believe it in your gut and your heart there's no good just sticking up the pictures of the Ferraris or whatever the fuck it is that you want to manifest on a on a cork board you have to believe it in your heart and um, and I was also explaining uh, the other day that you um, you uh, you know I I manifest things by setting things on a subroutine you know when I'm when my mind and my heart and my gut my whole being is set upon achieving something there's no stopping it and that has to be has to be 100 percent belief like faith in god it just has to be unshakable and then i set it i kind of imagine it as a subroutine like in a computer program and it's just going all day long in the back of my head in a little box <laughs> And you take steps towards it with what you've got in front of you. And sometimes, and when you do that, miracles happen. Things come out of nowhere. Things that you just wouldn't have dreamt of. And um, and that speeds up the process. And that's exactly what's happening. And part of this whole thing with me in terms of my own personal physical situation is that I've had, you know, all the stuff I've talked about in the channel in terms of healing and health, um have been massively useful to me personally. That's the reason why I talk about these things. Because I was... Um, uh, because I stopped exercising um, when COVID hit because I lost the tennis and then we were locked down. And I didn't, you know... And there were people during the lockdowns who were going, oh, this is great, I've got my perfect body, I've been exercising every day. But I didn't feel like doing that because I, I, just, I was, like, called to do something else. And effectively, I spent four years sat at a computer with my eyesight deteriorating... With, um, you know, not enough movement, just not enough movement. And one of the great things about working with Gary Keeley at the Healing Centre is Gary is a former PT. And if you've seen him on video, you know he's a perfect specimen of a human being. Uh, because he, he understands movement. And the movement's just integral in his life. And, which is great. Uh, and, I, and that used to be the same for me. I mean, my, my younger kids were like, asking me about my sporting background the other day. And I said, well, yeah, you know, I played football at a very high level. I played rugby at a high level. I was badminton at a high level. I played hockey. I um, I actually, I'm very proud of the fact that when I was 19, I went to do a parachute jump with the Red Devils. That's the parachute regiment's parachute display team uh, at Aldershot, which is where they're based. And we turned up to do this parachute jump. I think we were there for two or three days training to do it, and um, we did the uh, we did the assault course with the paras, and I beat all of them. I beat all of the paras at their own assault course, so I was fit. I was extremely fit, and I was telling my boys, you know, I used to get up with my dad and go running, um, do the three or four mile run every morning at five a.m before school I was I, I, you know, I did that but during the lockdowns I just didn't feel like exercising because I was just at it you know there was a point I think with my show I was doing maybe 10 shows a week um, and I'm taking a little bit of a break from doing shows at the moment because I've got so much work to do with the healing centre because we're expanding it and we're trying to make the right decisions about what's going in there and how to set it out because we're turning it into uh, a flagship for everybody else that wants to join the Live 5D Health family, it's going to become like a flagship venue and incorporating lots of the things that we've learned. So yesterday afternoon, me and Gary were sat with um, one of our advisors, who's a Celtic Druid, and um, we were. I was drawn to this man because I found out that he was the guy that brought the concept of living water to Ireland a long time ago, and we want to incorporate as much knowledge about natural energy, natural rhythms, natural healing 
into this healing center. So we're doing a lot of very interesting things that I don't think anybody else has ever done. I don't know, I might be wrong, but um, I don't think that anybody's ever put all this type of healing modalities and machinery together in one place, firstly. But secondly, we're building in um, a wet area to this extended area, which is going to include a proper sauna. Not a red light sauna, a proper sauna. And there's reasons for that, I'm not going to go into that now. But also a steam room. The steam room is big for me. I mean, this is something I'm very keen on. Because I, you know, I love going to saunas and steam rooms. It, it makes you feel amazing. But, you know, most of the ones, public leisure at least, and, and including the hotels and um, places that offer this, they're actually impregnating you with tap water. And you know how bad tap water is. So it makes me cross that people go to steam rooms and think, come out thinking that they're, they've done something amazing for their health. Where in fact they've actually impregnated themselves with fluoride and chlorine and all these other things. So we're trying to create a steam room that firstly has totally clean water coming into it, but then it's also structured. And there's a very simple way you can, you know, you can structure water extremely simply just by putting coiled copper, coiled in a certain way, because that creates a, a, an energy vortex that, and it's, and, it, and it's subtle. I mean, I stood on a copper coil yesterday and I started swaying in the energy field, in the vortex that was created by it. It's subtle, but it's there if you pick it up. The water picks it up really easily. So you've got the clean water coming in. It's, it's, it's um, structured and energized and made living concept that not enough people know about. And then I'm also looking at a way of mineralizing it before it goes into the steam room so that you're getting the best. But not just that. We're going to impregnate the walls of this whole place <clears throat> with the substance that's in the Orinoco, which is photonic light um, captured uh, in salt water with copper. Um, that's the simplest way of describing it, but it creates an energy field. And if you don't know what the Orinoco is, uh, go on Rumble or the Mark Atwood Show and type in Orinoco. Uh, or Malcolm if you type in the word Malcolm you should find it and there's a video there with Malcolm and Kat who make the Orinoco based upon the work of M.T. Kesh who's the Iranian physicist who open sourced this information I don't know how long ago, 20-30 years ago but it creates an energy field and we've had amazing results with people sitting in that energy field and you know getting incredible results from and it's different for everybody. It depends on your... It interacts with your energy field and your consciousness. So it depends on your intention. depends on your level of consciousness. But people have come out of there with wrists that have hurt for 20 years, suddenly not hurting anymore. Um, some people have gone in there and met their dead relatives. There's one farmer from around here that came in for the oxygen, tried out the Orinoco, and now he just comes and he uses the Orinoco. He has such a good time in there. And it, yeah, there's an element of the fact that it gives you a chance to sit down and be quiet for an hour, which not a lot of people do, which in and of itself is meditation, it's healing. Um, but it works on so many different levels that we're, we're trying to get the right ratio of this substance to put into the paint so that the whole area that we're creating has that healing in it and they won't even know it. And then talking to um, Con, the druid, yesterday, we want to, we want to incorporate trees and natural wood and um, also replicate some of these energy fields we don't want to overload it we, we just want to we want people to come in and not want to leave because they're getting healed just by being in the space that's what we're trying to achieve and we've got these new machines just coming we've got um this really high grade pemf machine now, if you've ever watched any of my shows with john white um from uh, spooky two um he he makes pemf machines for the home um, which are good, but this one is really powerful. The one that we've got, and I've had two sessions in that. And no, this is my third session, I think. Every time I use it, I literally ping awake with so much energy because it energizes every cell. Go and look it up PEMF, pulsed electromagnetic field therapy, which is brilliant. And, you know, my friend, I did a video, uh, I think on my Substack, I did a, a couple of videos and, a, and an article about going to Scotland recently to meet my friend, Jonathan Kennett, who came to one of my, I met in San Diego, uh, weirdly, I think it was about 2010, on a business conference. And 
he became a, a friend and I really like this guy he's one of my favourite people in the world actually he's just a a real uh, entrepreneur but also an inventor who's had a successful career inventing things and and he's on his own journey and anyway Jonathan if you didn't read that article on Substack or didn't watch any of the videos Jonathan built a healing centre in Glasgow called the Health Hub um, in this beautiful sort of uh, village outside of Glasgow and he's got very similar equipment to me and somebody that was working with him watched my channel and saw me do a video about Live 5D Health and then she showed it to him and he went hang on that's Mark I know him that's Mark Atwood now Jonathan came at, came at the whole thing from a different point of view to me he'd had a heart attack and he'd healed himself finding out because he's the kind of guy who goes well I'm not happy with this I'm going to sort this out myself so he, he went and found hyperbaric oxygen exercise exercise with oxygen which is known as Ewatts which we're also incorporating in our place and and then he opened the healing he had the money he had the money and the resources so he, he was outraged that none of these treatments were readily available on the NHS so he went and opened his own healing center which is brilliant and uh, yeah we, me and Gary went to visit and he's got he's got the um the uh, PMF there and he's got the red light bed which we're getting delivered next week and he's got the oxygen and he's got lots of different treatments that are similar to us not as esoteric we've got some more esoteric stuff that like the Rock Ziva we've got is like um, an amazing light machine that you'd lie under and um, you can there's loads of settings on it you can set it to go on an LSD trip if you want or it helps with anxiety it kind of works with the uh, it works with the synapses in the brain to help rewire in a good way, in the same way that magic mushrooms do. Psilocybin is the medicine of the future. Well, mushrooms generally are the medicines of the future, which is why I've also set up in partnership with Abby Wynn's husband, a mushroom farm, and we're busy trying to build or grow mushrooms at the moment like reishi and cordyceps and lion's mane but we're trying to do it incorporating all the things that we know such as the quality of the water the light the music that's played to them electro culture so we are growing what i think will be the finest mushroom medicinal mushrooms on the planet not ready yet but it's getting there there's my health routine there being lit up in my mouth. Ah, lovely nicotine, which uh, viruses don't like, apparently. Anyway, that's next on my list. But it's always going to be next on my list until we're through this, really. I don't don't shout at the... Whatever, however you're watching this, don't shout. Oh, stop smoking, Mark, you idiot. You can't go on about health if you're smoking. Nah, I can do what the fuck I want, actually. And so can you. Don't let anybody give you dogma dogmatic nonsense it takes you do what it you know you do what you can when you can as much as you can and um, so back to the the the, the um the energy that i've had and you know the the I've, or the other thing that i've been incorporating in my daily routine is brown's gas now brown's gas is a form of hydrogen gas that was discovered i think in the 60s by a guy called brown funnily enough it's not actually brown gas is Brown's gas. Don't go looking for shit-coloured gas. It's not. It's Brown's gas. Look it up. It's very interesting. <clears throat> Brown's gas creates HHO. Hydrogen, hydrogen, oxygen. I'm not a chemist. I couldn't exactly describe this. I've done enough research on it to see the benefits of it. And I've met... The other important thing is I've met enough people that have been using it over an extended period of time to see how it reverses their aging, um, improves their health beyond belief. Because it basically gives you the build... It basically, cut a long story short with Brown's gas. It gives the uh, body the building blocks that it needs to do whatever it needs to be done. But it does it. If you imagine the building blocks arriving next to each cell that requires building blocks... Uh, this Brown's Gas does it with a team of builders and machines and everything else, supercharged. So it gets the job done really quickly and um, efficiently and powerfully. So yeah, the combination of the Brown's Gas and 
the oxygen and the um because i've been in the hyperbarics as well and the pemf is having a profound effect on my sporting abilities and i've done a yeah i, I am stiff i am walking around it's, i'm not saying it doesn't hurt but the recovery is really fast and um even my one of my 14 year old one of my twins yesterday inadvertently paid me a compliment he doesn't doesn't often pay me compliments but he said he said but you are fit dada i went am i actually i am <laughs> i i think i'm not because i'm overweight still and i'm smoking but i can run around better than a lot of people i well, better than some people i know in their 30s um, maybe not in the 20s but the 30s definitely and so I'm pretty pleased with that and there's more to go with that because I'm going to add the red light to that there's a there's what we're working on creating stacks as well um, so we're trying to create so the, the uh, I wasn't going to talk about this but I am going to talk about it now because it's on my mind so the, the healing centre itself is currently offering Orinoco Roxiva PEMF now the hyperbaric oxygen but we've got to expand the space because we want to incorporate this this wet area as i've said and then a cold plunge pool to go with the steam room and the sauna because we want to get people coming in on a regular basis that's the first thing locals and we're in a small town two and a half thousand people in this town um the healing center is already uh, year one proven beyond doubt that just with two hyperbaric chambers anybody can set up one of these places and be profitable very quickly, especially with what I'm doing with the search engine optimization on the website, which is currently being rebuilt now. And it's going to be, it's, it's already on page one on google.ie for hyperbaric oxygen therapy island. And hyperbaric oxygen, if you don't know, is the one treatment that has in this kind of area of treatments that has demand. That's, you know, without that, when I say demand, I mean, there's a million people a month worldwide typing in hyperbaric oxygen therapy. That's the key, right? Nobody's, t you know, if you if you get in a new system, I'm not going to name names, but if you're getting a new system that's nobody actually knows what it's programmed with, it might get a big spike if you go on a big show like mine or something. I'm not saying mine's big, but, you know, if you come on to a, a show that is watched by enlightened people, and yeah, you'll get a rush and a flurry if you're in a business uh, that offers that service. But then it will peter out very quickly because nobody's looking for it. So you've got to have something that mainstream people are looking for. And the hyperbaric oxygen has been around for 370 years. So that's the reason why the oxygen is the bridge. And from a sustainability, from a business sustainability point of view, it's it's like a bedrock um, uh, service and then you can add the other services as time goes by if anybody's interested in doing that on with live 5d you'll be busy from day one um, and we've already we've, we've had a year's trading now we know we've made the mistakes um so if any of you 556 people that applied for the franchise which i had the vision for nearly a year ago um that's sort of, uh, still ongoing and you've had a year to think about this and and, and we've had a year to experience it as a business and um I'm, the prospectus is nearly finished i've been working hard on that we've just got a few additions and tweaks and then we're getting it designed and then that'll be put out there for anybody that wants to copy what we're doing and be part of the part of what we're doing the vision is actually to try and build a new health service and this is you know this is in lieu of the fact that the medbeg technology you know lots of people talk about it but I've never seen it and I've never met anybody that's seen it. I've met a lot of people that say they've seen it or say they're building it or saying it's coming tomorrow, it's coming tomorrow. But I don't believe in manana. I don't believe in inshallah, right? Because nothing gets fucking done. <laughs> I lived in Morocco for four years. Could you fix this uh, pipe? Inshallah. Could you move my furniture in tomorrow? Inshallah. It's manana. It's like, no, no, no. I want it done now. I'm an Aries, I'm impatient. You know, I'm a pain in the ass. These things got to get done. Let's do, look, we have everything we need to build the new world right in front of us. And all these things, uh, like med beds, true or not, whether the technology is true or not, it's not here now and people are dying now. And for the last year, at least, we've been healing people, a lot of people, 
and words getting out and it's it's amazing that's also why we're doing uh, more courses and stuff um the pain genie courses you know we're, we're looking forward to doing that because me and gary have used the pain genie and it's miraculous how quickly it helps in fact he used it on me yesterday because i pulled a muscle in my left arm playing tennis and the pain went down by 80 percent within five minutes it was extraordinary still hurts because i've actually got a pulled muscle but it's usable again a day later so that's why we're investing in doing more stuff like the pain genie also the body code i want us all to train in the body code because i had another session if you watched my video with julie at renine recently she uncovered the fact that i was abused whilst unconscious in hospital when i was about seven which i kind of knew but i didn't have any value i can't prove it but the body code is incredibly good at doing that and if you haven't done the body code with julie i highly recommend it go and look for the video that i did with her and uh, you can book in with her and she's she's very reasonable reasonably priced i mean um and it gives you such valuable i mean all of these healings are great but so yeah i've been full of beans and exercising and i've got a lot to do and i'm looking at the world and i'm seeing this attack in southport now southport in england is uh, north of liverpool and it's where i used to fly i used to fly at a place there called RAF wood vale which is between southport and formby or it's near both of those i can't remember exactly what direction a long time ago but i used to hang out in in southport uh, so I have memories of it. There was a place called the Scarris Brick Hotel. I used to go chatting up girls uh, years and years ago. Uh, not that that's relevant to this, because what what has just looks like has just happened there is, is horrific beyond words. And you know, I I can't prove anything. I can, all you can do in these scenarios is find your zero point field which is being zen effectively and be the observer and reacting to these things is um, I mean it is beyond horrific but at the same time we are living in a world where and I keep reminding people 22,000 children officially worldwide have gone missing every single day since the Second World War, at least. And what's happening to those children, or what's happened to those children, is more horrific than you could ever, ever imagine. In fact, Tom Numbers sent me an interesting WhatsApp this morning, or last night when I was asleep, showing the front cover of The Sun, and there's a picture of Hugh Edwards there in sunglasses, and it's, Hugh Edwards is the BBC newsreader, <coughs> <clears throat> pedophile he's the guy that reported on the queen's funeral he was like the big anchor in the uk a yet another bbc pedophile being uh charged this time um and there's a picture of him and it says beeb shame page nine and then right underneath that there's a picture of anthony hopkins dressed as hannibal the cannibal from Silence of the Lands, and it says Generation Cannibal, page 10. And Tom said, they're telling us Hugh Edwards is a cannibal. The BBC are generational cannibals. It's all going to come out. And I, my measured response to Tom at 6.32 this morning was, CUNTS! Because they are cunts. They are beyond evil. Which brings me to some of the social media posts so I posted this Abby wrote this um, uh, thing for me to post yesterday because we're doing the uh, weapons of mass protection club zoom call at 8 o'clock this evening in 12 hours and she wrote have you ever met a demon in real life you want to talk about it but nobody believes you join the mass protection club where you can share your stories be listened to and heard hosted by me and Abby you're invited to a once a month Zoom session because we see you. It's time for us to become stronger and empowered. Spiritual warfare is real. Let's get protected together. So there's a couple of comments under this that are interesting. Jenny Luscombe, who I've met, who's a lovely woman and has been on my show. 
She says, it's all you, even the demons. Pour them a brew. They're showing you the energy you need to heal and integrate. They're not external to you. They are part of your consciousness. Fighting them won't work. They are as broken as you. They are your brokenness. It's a reflection. As soon as you allow them to be there, and you can you can find out why they came, they don't need to stay. They'll find someone else. You are more powerful than them. So the one line that I 100% agree with there is that you are more powerful than them. But that contradicts the bit earlier where it says they are you, and they're part of your consciousness. So, and uh, you know, I'm not arguing with Jenny. I am merely pointing out my my experiences. Um, so if they are if they are as broken as you they are your brokenness so I question that because why did the demons come to me as a child why was I why was there an abortion attempt on me before I came here why throughout my life have I been hampered and screwed over by these things that have been trying to stop me do what I've been doing in my life why have they tried to destroy my spirit? Why have so many of my friends committed suicide? Now, on a multi-dimensional level, I think Jenny's right. You know, on on the on the big scheme of th- in the big scheme of things, everything is God, right? So everything is here for us. But you know, this this comment and this next one I'm going to read. Um, so we've got to find it. Which was based... Where's it gone? So typical when I want to find it, something. It's not there. It's like car keys, isn't it? Or pens. Or lighters. They have a mysterious place in the ether. Um, I think... Yeah, so JC says... I'm intrigued. Why tap into the fear frequencies talking about demons? Haven't we had enough already? Maybe consider discussing our most spiritual and powerful experiences instead. The frequency of love. I do find that a little bit condescending. And I'm saying that, you know, lightly. Maybe, Mark, you should think about this. The reason why that, I'm not triggered. Don't think I'm triggered. This is not Mark triggered. Mark triggered is somebody you don't want to meet. This is me going, hang on a minute. A lot of my stuff is righteous indignation. Because it's all based on my own experiences. I, I had this argument, um, must be 10 years ago at least, maybe 12 years ago. I was talking about satanic ritual abuse on Facebook 12, 14 years ago. One of my colleagues in the business world who was going through her own spiritual awakening kept saying to me, Mark, stop talking about this stuff. She was telling me what to do. If you know me in any way, you know that's not a good idea. <laughs> Don't tell me what to do. Give me a reason reason it out with me and I'll I'll pay attention and if it resonates with me I'll do, you know I will I'm actually a bit of a pussycat in that respect I will bend to anybody's will that proves to me that they've got a good point but in this case my own personal mission in life and my own personal experience and my point back then and my point now is that unless we know what the enemy is who the enemy is how are we supposed to fight it It's still the question for me now. We're dealing with an invisible enemy. And if you just look at your own experience in life and your own person, you have to be... I mean, it gets, it gets super complicated, right? Because then you, you, I, I'm going to walk into the realms of, well, death isn't real and all of that kind of stuff. But put that to one side and just look at your own life. I mean, I've just mentioned suicides. Lots of my friends committed suicide. I've realised it's all because of demonic attacks over the years. I've put, everything comes down to demonic attacks. Human beings are beautiful, wonderful, full of love, etc. Totally innocent. So how was I broken as a three-year-old? What was my brokenness as a three-year-old when these demons came to recruit me in my bedroom? I wasn't broken. I was a brand new human. You know, on a soul level, maybe. There's, a, there's an element to that. But I, I view it differently because 
you know, through past life regressions and through lots of the work that I've done on myself, I've been fighting these fuckers for a long time. And this concept of um, maybe considered discussing our most spiritual and powerful experiences instead. Well, I am discussing my most spiritual and powerful experiences, which is demonic attacks. Uh, oh, that's all your own reality. You've created it all. Yeah, yes, but it's also my mission and it's part of the thing. And part of what we're doing with this weapons is to give people a place to talk about this stuff because I, I learned this when I started talking about demonic attacks and stuff online four years ago that, you know, millions of people are aware of this, but they've been, they've kept it quiet. They've kept it under the carpet. They've been too embarrassed to speak about it because of the shame and guilt of it. I mean, I wrote about some demonic attacks I had in January, which were horrific, horrifically sexual, horrible, fucking evil shit. And I was told from above, you need to write about it and share it. And then I did even though it was hard to do. And then people said, thank you so much for sharing that because I've had similar things, but I've been too ashamed to speak about it. The one thing these demons hate is the light. By talking about it, by bringing it into the light, we are destroying them. Oh, no, you can't destroy them. You have to send them love. No, you have to destroy them. This, this, that's new age bullshit. It is. What are you going to do? Just sit and let them fucking kill you and your friends and your whole family and everything? That's what we're sat. That's what this is all about. It's about: Are you going to stand up? Are you going to recognise the enemy? Are you going to stand up? I mean, I was going to. I was going to make a video yesterday. Uh, a message for all the immigrants and for all the racists, and to say, look, you know, the, the, your enemy. You're not each other's enemy. We have a common enemy, and that is Satan and his minions. That's the enemy you can't see that is making you hate each other and fight each other and do despicable things to each other. That's what we're being shown. Um, the governments are all controlled, or have been, by Satan. It's plain as the nose on my face, which, according to my kids, is way too fat for a white man. That's probably because I've got some black lineage somewhere. I know I've got a black uncle somewhere that I've never met. That's another story for another day. <laughs> um, so, yeah, these condescending messages are... You know, I don't dismiss them. I'm not deleting them. And, and I'm not arguing in, with people on a personal level in any way. I'm just like, you know, these things are important to discuss. And, um, you know, I've got a f friend and a healer who's been on my show called Susan Ashley. And, and, and she's she's been on my show and um, she's phenomenal. I, I need to do a show with her again soon. Um, it comes when it comes. The same with everything, uh, with what I've been doing. It just you, you just got to follow the instructions as they're laid out before you on a daily basis after giving gratitude and asking for protection because you have to ask for it and it is there and that's really what Abby and mine's message is about it's like firstly identify the enemy secondly if it's affecting you and you, you want to talk about it join our club if not read the book and do her she's just released a a workbook uh, that you can get on Amazon as well um, you can also download you can get the download PDF or you can go and buy the actual she's phenomenal producer of content Abby and she's broken it all down as a workbook for people where this is overwhelming so you can work through the stuff that we discuss in the book and that's why we've set the club up it's like you know it's a place for a place for people to just share their stuff and feel less alone uh, and if you don't want to do that don't do it don't don't do it you don't have to do it it's not <laughs> Nobody's got a gun at your head. And if you do feel strongly by those two comments, go and set your own club up. Write your own book. You know, you don't have to listen to me or Abby. If it doesn't resonate with you, go somewhere else. It's fine. With, I don't care. It's not about... Like I said at the beginning, this I never did any of this to be popular. 
I did this because it's work that needs to be done. And um, if I hold up a mirror to people and challenge them, good, that's my job. I've just noticed on the Telegram channel there's 3,033 members. Hmm? There are no coincidences. Oh, you're in the Illuminati. No, I'm not. Go and look up 333. Well, there's a lot of stuff I'd even posted about Macron's wife. I think that's all definitely coming out on purpose. And I think, actually, that's what the transvestite ceremony was all about. It's really highlighting... Highlighting this evil. And it's doing a good job, isn't it? It's doing a good job. I think people wonder... Oh horrific murders in towns like Southport are a good thing, well they are, obviously murder is never a good thing and children beyond the pale I just pray something good will come of it which I think ultimately it will but it's painful to watch and it's painful to be part of, I know that I'm not saying I find it easy to be in these situations either but if it was good, if it was easy, you wouldn't have agreed to come here in the first place, because you did, whether you know it or not. Um, so I'm going to pop over to Twitter because it's always in, Twitter is the best kind of barometer. Um, we, yeah, this is a, a post from the White Rabbit podcast, and I'm going to follow them. Friends in Paris tell me that Paris is empty. The Olympics is an expensive flop. Restaurants are making no money. Tourists have not arrived. I guessed they ensured that would happen with their imported migrant crime and pornographic opening ceremony. What has also driven people away is the Olympics is 100% cashless and all products and services are via QR code. People are literally checked out of hotels because of it. Cashless is failing. See, that's a, that's a wonderful side effect. Cashless is not the way forward, guys. I'm guilty of using my card. I'm not preaching to anybody and I'm not giving anybody dogma. But, you know, I try to get cash out as much as I can and use cash whenever possible. When I met somebody yesterday, I had to go and buy a new washing machine and there's a really lovely guy who I know he was there and I bumped into him. We had a little chat. And he said, what's going on? I said, well, I think the next 10 weeks are going to be fucking nuts. You know, just look around the internet. 13-foot crocodile found, or alligator found on a beach in, uh, crocodile, found on a beach in Australia with its head missing. What could do that? Maybe a great white shark, or maybe something else. Who knows? The veil is, the dimensions are definitely shifting. Uh, <laughs> So many thoughts pop into my head when I say stuff like that. The one that popped in then is that I did... I don't know if I shared it, but there was a video made here in Boyle from 34 years ago, which featured a man that I know called Professor Eamon Ansborough, who lives about 10 minutes from me. I've had lunch with him a few times. I would like to make a film with him. Um, who moved here in 1996 after there was a crash in the curlews, which are the hills near me, I can see them from here in my garden. And uh, he's an astronomer and a professor, and he's he's been monitoring the UFOs here for 35, nearly 40 years, and he's produced irrefutable evidence of the UFOs here. And he was being filmed down near the lake near here, which is where Yates and Crowley did some of their weird shit as members of the Metic Order of the Golden Dawn. Literally five, four minutes in the car from where I'm sat. And this video was, I think it was on RTE, and it was, and it also featured Betty Mailer, who's one of my heroes, who's no longer with us. She set up the UFO Society of Ireland with Eamon um, in 96, I think, which ran for, I don't know, 15, 20 years. And, um, attracted a lot of people to this town. Uh, some people call this town the Roswell of Ireland. There's some great books written about UFOs in Ireland. This really is a hotbed. I know the whole world is a hotbed, but this place is particularly interesting. And this is, of course, where I witnessed the big triangular ship and the dragon 
made of light flying above my head. I'm actually looking at where that was a couple of years ago now. So it's a very interesting place. And, and uh, in that video that was shared on Facebook locally um, last week, my neighbour sent it to me. Um, Eamon's talking about the portals that are here, the interdimensional portals. And somebody in the chat on Facebook, I can't actually log into Facebook, but I could see this um, post for some reason. And it's, uh, somebody said, yeah, well, we, we've... Had the, we've, we all know about the interdimensional portal. Some of us are using it all the time. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. I've got to track that guy down. Um, Betty used to, the story goes that she used to row in a little rowing boat out on the lake looking for the portals with her divining rods. And the locals would go, have you seen the little green men, Betty? <laughs> and she's really fondly remembered here. Everybody that interacted with her loved her. They thought she was eccentric and a bit of a crackpot. But there's a lot of people here that have seen UFOs and had experiences. And a lot of them keep it quiet because uh, like the UFOs and demonic stuff, one of the other things that they do, or one of the other things that happens with these experiences is, is it creates a kind of amnesia. And I think that amnesia, a bit like the men in black, you know, with the stick, I think that sh shit does happen. I've met people from around here that don't remember anything in their childhood until their teens which is really bizarre um, because so much weird shit has gone on. I mean, I don't remember being, I don't physically remember, I don't remember physically being abused as a child um, in the hospital, um, but it happened. I know it happened. Um, and actually, there are no coincidences. Here's another post that I put up, kind of a controversial one, but it's uh, one that I saw this picture on Twitter yesterday, which is of Mike Pence, um, the former vice president who had to run, who ran with Trump, who I've known about as a bad guy for a very long time. And there's pictures of him in a, you know, in a gay top, in a gay bar from the eighties. Um, you know, and I, there was a there was a whistleblower that was talking about in graphic detail how he would rape and murder children. And then somebody posted it yesterday, Mickey Larson Olsen. Yes, and Mike Pence was a baby raping, baby murderer in sex trafficking, trafficking governor of the state of Indiana. He was executed after he tried to kill JFK Jr. for real on July the 2nd, 2019. I can't verify that, but it's interesting and it wouldn't surprise me. President Trump was going to bring JFK Jr. out to the public and that's why he wanted to have this huge parade on July the 4th, 2019 in Washington, D.C., now that's interesting and I didn't know that is it true? it rings true to me you make your own decisions Mike Pence and some corrupt generals tried to kill him the call sign changed on Air Force 2 to Sam 239 and they call, the call sign can only change only changes on Air Force 2 if the Vice President is dead or no longer the Vice President you have not been seeing Mike Pence since that date I totally agree with that we you know, people say, well, how can this be a movie if babies are being murdered? Well, babies are being murdered thousands every hour. This is, you know, this is the biggest spiritual war in history. Mike Pence did not certify jack shit. He was long gone before January the 6th, 21. Robotoids, actors wear masks with voice modulators, but the real Mike Pence was executed. This robot thing is popping up a lot. And uh, I just watched a video of a guy working at Tesla who said the robot army is being built. He's working there 12 hours a day, six days a week. <clears throat> and uh, he had quite a pessimistic view on these robots, um, that they were coming to take over everybody's job, you know, which is not as pessimistic as they're coming to kill everybody because that could very easily happen. And I think there was a robot army ready to do that. Um but it also cropped up at the same time as that famous uh, video of Katy Perry doing a gig where her eyelid failed and just dropped. That's certainly, I'd certainly say that looked more robotoid, more robotic behaviour than, more, looks more like a, a, an android failing than it does a clone failing. And remember, Russell Brand was married to that person and you don't marry somebody that high up in the Illuminati without being 
high up in the Illuminati. That's just my opinion. I don't know if it's true. It's just a question. Um, and this post continues. Uh, on July the 4th, 2020, President Donald J. Trump and others signed a new declaration of independence from the United States Corporation. See, this is the United States Republic, which JFK Jr. as our 19th Vice President taking down the United States of America Corporation and all the evil that's been party to it since 1871 which it, when it was created by the British under the British Crown. So much is at stake, so much going on. I can't disagree with most of that. I can't verify JFK Jr. is alive, but it feels like he is. And it does his death does it makes sense that he would fake his own death to me. It makes sense that he would be behind the scenes with this because the Q thing goes way back to JFK, his dad, and probably before. Um, and this idea that, I mean, it gets the, mud, the waters get muddied here a lot. I mean, Pascal Najardi is apparently claiming that he's JFK Jr. There were people saying that um, Vincent Fuchsia, who was called out. Uh, by Trump yesterday, I think, because uh, in the audience, because he was behind him when Trump got shot. People have said that's JFK Jr., although some people say, well, there's, he's too short. There's also people that say 107 is JFK. I think Kerry Cassidy insists that he's JFK Jr. Well, if he is, then that means I've had lunch with JFK Jr., because I <laughs> sat and ate lunch with 107 in Anaheim. And it was very strange. It, it, there was something very strange about that man. Um, something unreal. Uh, and he, and he, he, I, I'll never forget, he, he talked to us for a good couple of hours. It was, um, it was a very, I must write it in a book one day. Um, anyway, Ulysses Grant was our 18th president and he took out a loan through the British Crown because we were bankrupt after the Civil War. And they changed us from the United States for America to an all-caps corporation called the United States of America. But that is all 100% true. The loan was required to be paid in gold, and we finally had the gold underneath the World Trade Center on September the 11th, 2001. And our own our government attacked itself to steal all that gold, especially George H.W. Bush. New World Order. And we, we will succeed. And we will succeed. I was thinking about that speech. I need to dig it out. It was chilling. He was a bad motherfucker. And he was married to Barbara, who is allegedly the daughter of Alistair Crowley, or the son, pretending to be a woman of Alistair Crowley. Certainly looks like Alistair Crowley, Barbara Bush, which links back to this island that's five minutes from me. Um, yes, and George W. Bush. George H.W. Bush was actually born in Germany and brought to America under Operation Paperclip with his father. That's true, too. His father was... Uh, oh, what's his dad's name? Prescott Bush, I think. And he was awarded Nazi medals. And he was the one that raised money from Ford to build concentration camps. And when this is, you know, is that true history? I don't know, but the Bushes are deep, dark motherfuckers. Um, Mike Pence was the deep state's insurance policy. I believe that is probably true. He was forced on President Trump. At that time, Trump didn't have any political capital, but that's not an issue now. The Republican Party is President Trump's bitch. I love the way Americans talk. <laughs> they, and they better act accordingly. They better stop being disrespectful to the MAGA movement. See, they were going to get rid of Tre President Trump no matter what, and they were going to make Mike Pence the president so they could continue doing their evil deeds against children. I agree with that. Quite the contrary with President Trump, where his first executive order was to end human trafficking and take assets away from those who engaged in the horrific evil of human trafficking. That last sentence is true. Which makes it... it it's something you have to come back to when you are faced with all the dis disparity about Trump. Is he a psyop? Well, if you listen to David Icke, yes, he is. If you listen to Jeanette Archer, he's who's an SRA survivor, and somebody I respect a lot, um, she says Trump is one of the bad guys, but she also says David Icke is one of the bad guys. 
and I find all that very difficult to comprehend. I'm not saying she's wrong. And, you know, the information she's getting is from somewhere that she trusts, obviously. But I don't know. Um, is it, you know, if they have had, and I believe they have, time travel uh, or the ability to look into the future, is it beyond comprehension that they might rape children with a David Icke mask on? or Donald Trump mask on 30 years ago in order to create victims that believe that they're bad guys in order to discredit them in the future. Well, you know, we're living in sci-fi world. That was all possible. And you have to follow your own gut. And if I'm wrong about this, then I, you know, I'll go along with the rest of them. But Donald Trump is working for God as far as I'm concerned. And so am I. And I know that's true. And if it isn't true, then, my God, I've been hoodwinked with my entire existence which is possible I suppose but ultimately for all of us it comes down to finding that place of zen and doing your best every single day which is what I'm trying to do so whatever you're doing today I hope you do your best and that you have a great day and you are loved don't forget that just look around you Listen to the birds. Look at the bees. I'm seeing lots of bees. It's good. It's not all bad. And this thing is coming to a close. I know it is. So stay, stay strong. And live your best life today. And give as much love out as you possibly can. And coming back to the post from JC, I think it was, saying talk about love. Yeah, I agree with the sentiment. I do. Of course I do. But I think we need to, for anybody that wants to face off the enemy and kick them in the ass like I do, then, you know, come along for the ride. And if you don't agree with that, do your own thing. So whatever you're doing today, have a wonderful time if you can. And uh, God bless you.